Right, where were we? We've, we've created a harness for the router and we have a bracket on top. And I am now going to attach this to the end of a windsurfing mast. And it's probably in the title of the video why I'm doing this, but let's just go and do it anyway. But first, I just need to explain something about the router, which I didn't really touch on in the previous video. Come down here. You'll notice I now have a cutter attached, and I didn't have a cutter on it in the previous video because I was working on it. It's awkward once you've got the cutter on, because I can't fully retract this cutter. I have adjustment, it's, it's very stiff because this is quite a close fitting collar around the top here, but I do have adjustment and I can't fully retract the cutter but in practice I don't need to because the, the, the router will never be sitting on its base plate, I will always have the cutter extended and the, this is really just for adjustment of the depth. Um, when I'm making multiple passes. In practice, for the sort of things I'm going to be doing, I won't actually need that much adjustment. So really I've just got, how much have I got by eyeball? I've got about 30 millimetres of adjustment, I think. I think any more and I'm at the full extent. This, this, there you go, it's locked, so I can't actually go that far. Yeah, so in practice I've only got about 20 millimetres of adjustment, but I, I think I'm okay with that. Um, this has been a sort of compromise in many ways, but I should be alright. That's just to give me fine adjustment while I'm actually doing the work. The actual height of the, the router will be mostly adjusted by whatever is attached to the side of the frame. So uh, this is really just for fine adjustment. Right, this is the top of my tripod and I'm going to put three holes in here for the tips of the windsurfing masts and then the, the other windsurfing mast is going to be four and one's going to be suspended here with the router underneath. I need to get the angles right because this is a tripod so what I've done is I've set the uh, bevel at the right angle. Um, the legs are going to go splayed that way and then straight that way and uh, well let's give it a go <laughs> hmm. well, so, so far so good just going to double check the angle as far as it seems to want to go. I think that's enough. Right. Next one. Oh, bonus. A whole load of plywood's come out, but I'm now going to have to clear it out of the drill. I'm surprised at how hard this is. I thought it was going to be easier than this. There we go. And now we really are at the limit. Yeah, so I've just got to remember I've got to try and remove... In fact, that has broken free, so I should be able to just pull that out. There we go. Ah! <laughs> that is a lot easier than I was hoping. Hoping? Expecting. Fearing. I suspect, yep, this one's broken free as well. So there we go, plywood. Not as bad as I thought. That's all right. Yeah. And one more. This should be a lot easier now that I've learnt some lessons. So we go part of the way in and then we try to break the, there we go. Break the uh, plywood off and we can go into our full depth. Brilliant. That's the way to do it. That's so much easier. I think that's the same depth as the others now. Yeah, that'll do. 
I know there are better techniques for bending metal, but this is fairly soft aluminium. <laughs> and yeah, I think it should be okay. I can't bend it that far using the, the clamp because of clearance. <laughs> In fact, I can only bend it that much. I might have to get the hammer out at some point. In fact, maybe now. And a three millimeter hole in the middle for the pivot, which I will explain more fully in a minute. Compared to the usually over engineered solutions I often come up with, this is all I need for the pivot because that, that was the angle of the. Uh, the swing I need from the tripod legs and we've easily got that and we've got a little bit of play up and down millimeter but as this is going to be hanging that's that's not going to be a problem so um, we're there how scared does my tripod head look I need this mass the same length as the others and the end's a bit mangled so I was going to cut it off of course that means it's just very slightly wider uh, because it's tapered all the way down and uh, I'm going to have trouble getting this into the tripod head so I'm going to have to do some work on the tripod head as well it's just too small just can't get it in Nice bonus is I now have quite a tight join, so that's on really solidly. Ooh. And then the other masts fit in looser, but fairly snug. No, I'm going to have to uh, use the drill as a marker and then drill them separately, I think. This is a very hard alloy.
a bit of a tight fit. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit too much of a tight fit. But it is going through. I'm taking an approximate amount off the end. I will have to shorten it a bit more, but uh, I have to get everything in place before I know how long it needs to be. I'm going to tap this hole, but the tap isn't quite long enough to go all the way through, so I'm just going to open up the top a little bit, just go in very short way. That's enough. Just enough to allow the tap to just drop in a little bit. Idea of tapping wood works surprisingly well. So that should be enough to provide a leg that can level the platform. It's a bit wobbly, so I'm just lowering that leg a bit. Perfect. I've now got to take this all down because I can't risk sawing and drilling the mast in situ because of breaking the joints at the top. <laughs> oh well. In case you were wondering, this is a dead mast. I bent it during the National Windsurfing Championships 20 years ago. Mm.